this is Prep Station. We'll begin today's class with literature in English. So here are the general objectives. The aim of the UTM examination is to prepare candidates based on the syllabus for literature in English. First is to stimulate and sustain the student's interest in literature in English. Now what does this mean? You're expected to find the literature text read them and then prepare for these exams. Then create an awareness of the general principles of literature. By general principles, you talk about types of drama, types of prose, and then types of poetry. Then appreciate the literary works of all genres and across all cultures. That's why you'll be tested on African and non-African literary works. Apply the knowledge of literature in English to the analysis of social, political, and economic events in the society via the themes of the literary work, via the setting of the work, and if there are allusions to certain events in history, you're expected to know that as well. The candidates will be asked 40 to 50 questions. Now, what do we mean? In recent times, candidates have been asked 40 questions, but in the past, it's been 50 questions. So it's best for us as students to prepare. You might be tested on 50 questions. You might be tested on 40 questions. These questions are also broken into sections. The first section has to do, the first section has to do with the literary text. So yeah, you'll be given about 30 questions on all the literature books the plays and also the poems. Then the second section is the general literary principles. That is types of drama, types of prose, um, general terms, and then things you need to know when it comes to prose, drama, and poetry. Then the section C, you'll be given five to 10 questions on literary appreciation. This is usually the sin and unseen poems or sin and unseen drama. They are from excerpts of books that you must have come across. So you'll be tested on these aspects. Genres of literature. Let's look at the general literary principles. So first, I would begin with drama because candidates will be asked questions in prose, poetry, and drama. So I'll begin with drama and then we'll discuss the types of drama and then we'll move on that way. First, the first type of drama is tragedy. What is tragedy? Tragedy has to do with a play with an unhappy ending. Events are usually serious when it comes to tragedy. There is no, there's, there's nothing trivial about a tragic work. Events are always serious and characters are usually serious. The protagonist is the focused person in the play. He's someone who is loved by all because he is driven by a certain ambition. So examples of tragi a tragic work or a tragedy is the play Let Me Die Alone by John K. Cabo. Comedy. Comedy is a light-hearted play that ridicules the follies of characters. Here, nothing too serious goes on. It's just a play that everyone reads and then is happy and then it has a happy ending. Then the main feature, of, the main feature is humor and it ends happily. So examples, a major example is The Lion and the Draw by Wale Shrenka. Then the tragic comedy, this is a play that combines the element of tragedy and then comedy. It begins as a serious event and then it ends happily. That's what happens here. The tone and series of movements are usually serious, but then it ends happily. A popular example is The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. Melodrama. This is a type of play that highlights suspense and romantic sentiments with character who, characters who are either usually good or clearly bad. So in this case, there are two extremes. You have characters that are usually very good, and then you have characters that are usually very bad. And there's a musical background, musical um, tone to heighten the emotional effect. The sounds to show that there's a serious event. There's a music tone to show that events are serious and then events are also light. Examples, Arms and the Man by Bernard Shaw. Then fast. 
This is a type of drama characterized by broad visual effect and fast moving action. Now, what does this mean? In most plays that um, take this, in most plays that take this form, you have characters that have to do with, they are stereotyped. They do not grow, they do not change. So you can easily tell that this character will remain that way throughout the play. I'm sure many of you watch, have seen plays like this on your TV. Maybe, for example, the Johnsons, you know that there's a character, Spiff, who behaves in a certain way. So you have characters like that in this kind of work. They are usually, they have a certain behavior, a certain manner, a certain attitude. And then they know that there's danger ahead, but nothing really happens in the end. It's just for laughs anyway. So you have, they are stock characters and their actions lead them to the brink of disaster. It gets to the point where you might think that they are going to die or something bad will happen, but somehow they never really get into that disaster. A major example is The Wizard of Law by Zulu Shofola. Then historical drama. This is a type of play based on historical actions or historical records, events in history majorly. So you won't really, most times they are usually factual events, just that the characters might not be, the characters are not the one that would act, are not the ones that act this drama on stage. So most of the time you'll find out that they are, historical dramas are dramas that have happened in the past and then people will act the same plays out. A major example is Ovarome Nogba Isi by Ola Rotimi. It's a play that talks about King Ovarome of Benin Kingdom and how he was sent on exile by the whites. Other types of drama, we have mine. This is a play in which the, 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 the scenes are done with bodily movements and gestures. It's without words and characters do not speak. They don't say anything. What they do is they dance or they use gestures, hand gestures or their facial expressions to pass on a message. We have monologue. This is a type of play done by a single character, just one person speaking all through, expressing his thoughts and then acting on stage. That is if it's done on stage or the person is just there acting. We have realistic drama. This is a play that attempts in content and presentation to retain, present, and maintain a notion of an actual everyday existence. By this, what do we mean? Events happen all the time and every day. So most times, these events are brought to life in this kind of play. You can easily place this type of drama side by side with everyday events. I'm sure you must have watched some plays on TV or some movies and then it looks so it looks so close to certain events that must have happened at a particular time. That's what we mean by realistic drama. And then it's so close and then when you're about to watch the movie or when you come to the end, you see things like the characters in this movie are fictitious. That tells you that it's just a work of fiction. The character, the writer probably sat down and then imagined and then wrote or probably listened to a story and then wrote the play out. Opera drama. This is a, theoret a theoretical piece that tells a story through music. The music goes on and then the play goes on as well. It consists of recitatives which provide the narrative plot line and elaborate chorus. So the chorus comes in and then sings. A major example is the movie The Phantom of the Opera. So they pass messages through songs. You notice that characters will sing and then there's a chorus and then the play goes on like that. That's a type of drama. Now let's look at another genre of literature which is prose and then it's expected of us to know the types of prose just as we've done for drama. There are two major types. We have fiction and non-fiction. Every other kind of prose falls under these two major groups types of prose. The first is fiction. Now this is a type of story that is written creative, creatively. A writer, the author sits down and then imagines and writes. It is imagined as the events are not true. Yes, they may look similar, but they are not true. You're, you understand? 
because sometimes they might um, a writer might involve things like fairies, gnomes, magic, and things like that in the play. So most times in the prose work. So most of the time, an author would just sit down and then imagine, could tell it, um, himself or herself, what if a stone could speak? And then the stone might be the sage in the play, um, in the prose work like that. So stories come up that way. Then it is imagined as the events are not true. As I said earlier, examples, you have novels, novelas, novelettes, short stories, fables, allegories, gothic stories, and metafictions. These are examples of prose work. The first is the novel. We are familiar. Yes, we've seen novels before. So a novel is a long fictive work peopled by imaginary characters in which events are artistically presented. You have so many characters in a novel. And apart from that, you have lots of pages and lots of words. People, there are many people that do not like reading novels, but as a literature student, you should enjoy reading novels. And it's fictive. Most times, they are not always true. So most of the time, the writer imagines, like I said earlier, events might be similar because they try to write to bring the events closer. But at the same time, it's also artistically done. A typical example is Chimamanda's Americana. That's a typical example of a novel. Novella, this is neither a full novel nor a short story. It is longer than a short story, but shorter than a novel. Most of your texts in the junior secondary school three that you were told to read for your BESA exams fall on the, into this category. Maybe the costly mistake, a typical example, it's short like that. You could sit down and finish it within a day. Uh, a typical example here is The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Novelettes. It's a short novel, typically one that is light and romantic. It has a happy ending. Most times, good triumphs over evil. I'm sure while we're growing up, our parents introduced us to novelettes. A typical example, you have your Cinderella, you have your Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, you have your Sleeping Beauty and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. These are examples of novelettes. Short story. It's a small world of the novel. It has few characters whose actions center around a single event and would still enjoy a sense of completeness. In other words, what does this mean? When you talk about short stories, it's just one event that ties all the characters together. Most times you have them as collections. So it's just a single event that ties all the characters. You do not have, it's, it's not broken down into chapters. It's usually one or two, three pages, and then it's just one major event is set maybe one or two places, and then you have very few characters, maybe about three to four characters. A typical example is a South African short story titled Me and the Fish God. Fable. This is a narrative which possesses a straight and surface meaning. Characters in fables are usually animals that dialogue as human beings. We are familiar with stories like this. The tortoise, the greedy tortoise, and things like that about the lion being the king of the jungle. It's an example of a fable, the lion and the hare, and things like that. So you have animals as characters. They talk, they speak, and then they do certain things in the, in the, in the story. So that's an example of a fable. Allegory. This is a type of story that makes use of both elements of fable and ideas or morals. Now, people who write these kinds of stories, what they try to do is they use animals or certain characters. They give them moral names. You could have characters such as purity, slothful, um, greed, and pride, for example. So they use characters that are symbolic in nature because they may not want to pass the message directly, but they will pass this story, the message, using animals as characters, sometimes, or people who bear such names with either the advice or virtues. 
Characters are symbolic as they represent virtues or vices in stories such as religion, morality, and politics. A typical example of this is The Pilgrim's Progress by John Boyan. The Gothic novel. This is a novel dominated by elements of terror, horror, and the supernatural, which engenders fear. Yes, most times, just as we have horror movies, we also have Gothic stories. A typical example of this is The Woodring Heights. Most times you find out that the, the, the characters tend to conjure spirits, or sometimes you have ghosts in the novels, and then by different characters, and they use, maybe they conjure the ghost of the person to go and perform a certain act somewhere. So you have things like that in the novel, things like um, 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 ghosts, things like fairies, you have things like um, death, and things like that, very supernatural events that create a form of horror and fear, fear rather. Example is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Metafiction. When you hear about meta, most times metaphysical, it, it has to do with bringing the supernatural in. And it's a novel that explores the processes of novel writing itself, a fiction about a fiction. So sometimes you notice this happens in the movies, right? When you're watching a movie and then one tells a story and then there's a story within that story. More or less like, would I say a deja vu act? Well, you have things like that. So there's a fiction about a fiction. So you're reading a novel, and then the novel is telling you a story. And in that same story, there's another story in there. But at the end of the day, they are linked at the end. And then it's, when you finish such novels, you then find out that, oh, it was, there was a story in this one. A, a, an example is End by Barbara Adair. Nonfiction. This is a type of story that is not imagined. Stories in this category are usually true and factual. You have biographies, autobiographies, memoirs, letters, essays, and journals. Biographies. This is a non-fictive presentation of the life story of a person written by another person. Yes, sometimes you could have people in the society maybe um, 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 doctors or professors or the president, for instance, and then someone might want to know about his or her life. So they go to such people and ask questions. And then you hear things like, can it be documented? We would like to put this as a book for sale somewhere. So you have things like that. And then people would document their, their stories and put their stories in books. So that's a biography. Example, Awo. That's the story of Chief Obafemi Awolowo, a philosopher by Moses Akima Kinde. Autobiography. This is a type of story written by the person who lived it. Example, Audacity of Hope by Barack Obama. Yes, we are familiar with that, and I'm sure we must have seen the book in different shelves. Barack Obama sat down to write the story by himself. Of course, he must have paid editors who must have done that anyway. So that's an autobiography. Memoirs. Memoirs are close to autobiographies, but they differ in the sense that a memoir is the recollection of important people who have been part of a major event or have observed the event. Now, let me pause here. For instance, in this case, let's say um, a certain event happened in um, one's life, for example, maybe when the person was to graduate from the university. Let's say it happened in the life of Abu, for example. And then people were around, and people were around that time when that event took place. So what happens? The writer writing a memoir would ask those that were around what happened, and then they tell him things. So he puts all of that into a collection. So by the time you hear from Mary, from Chris, from John, 
from Bola and they give you different accounts of these events, it becomes, and then when it's put together into a collection, it becomes a memoir. Because the person who experienced the event most of the time, the, the writer doesn't speak to that person, but speaks to people around who experienced that. So that gives him a variety of different stories and what exactly happened. So he has different views and different opinions, and then he puts that together and it becomes a memoir. It's believed that memoirs cover a particular time frame of a writer's life yes maybe one or two years or six months of that person's life example there was a country there was once a country by chenwa achebe letters this refers to correspondences between persons of note most times letters are used to reconstruct the past past assess essence of events and relationships such as love or hate to advance the plot of a story. So someone could sit and then put together or get the letters written to him or her at a particular time and then reconstruct them into stories. So at a particular period of time, one would begin to put these letters together, then maybe their replies, and then it becomes a story. Examples, tales by Isido Okweo. Essays. This is a short prose composition on a singular subject or issue. Essays, that's people who write essays, give their own opinions and views on certain issues. Yeah, some people just sit down and then they write essays on a particular topic. It's quite different from an article because an article is most of the time written for the purpose of publication. And that's quite different. So you, you publish an article and then you put it out there. And sometimes people tend to counter your opinion. But when you write an essay and then you put it together as a collection, it's there as a book. People read it and then they know that that's your own view. And sometimes such essays create like a work. It creates... It creates a, 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 a it's, it creates a background or would I say a springboard that people could use to work with. So an example is Ujama by Julius Nyerere. Journals. Journals are occasional publications on research findings or news in a particular field of study. Now this is common in the universities basically where lecturers in various departments will just write a journal on a particular work and most of the time when they write journals like that they go to make their research and add one or two things to the journals and then their research findings. Journals are majorly found in the universities or departments of study. Now let's move on to poetry. The various types of poems are lyric, the narrative poem, ode, sonnet, epic, dirge, blank verse or free verse, and many more. Lyric. This is a short musical poem which is usually sung by a person called a minstrel to the accompaniment of an instrument, of an instrument called the lyre. We don't really have that now in this part of the world, but in ancient societies like the Greeks, they were the kinds, the Greeks were those who actually made use of the lyric. So it's a short musical poem, and most of the time, a minstrel sings it, and then there is a lyre, the musical instrument that accompanies it. Then you have a narrative poem, is a poem that tells a story. It revolves around a character or characters and what they go through. Yes. Example is Beowulf. Beowulf was a character that was strong, a hero, like a legend then. So the poem Beowulf is a lengthy poem, and you have um, a part that talks about how, when he was born, then how he grew, his accomplishments, and people he defeated, and things like that. So it's quite a long poem by Geoffrey Chaucer. Old. This is a reflective poem that addresses an entity. It's written to celebrate or exalt that object. Now, when you have poems like this, sometimes the authors, the poets are unknown. A typical example is Salute to the Elephant. We do not know who wrote that poem. But in the poem, the poet just went about praising and talking about the attributes of the elephant, how big the elephant is, and things that the elephant does. But another example is Ode to the Gracian On by John Keats. 
John Keats in that poem talks about the urn that was used to put ashes. And then he describes it in such a way that he uses terms as though the urn were a living being. So he goes ahead praising the urn and then describing the urn and saying good things about the urn. So most times when you talk about ode, you have poets praising a particular entity, talking about its attributes and what it does. Sonnet. This is a poem of 14 lines. A sonnet is usually divided into two. Octave. I'm sure you're familiar with that term. An octave is a poem of eight lines. And a sestet, which is a, line, which is a poem of six lines. For Petrarchan sonnet, that's for Petrarchan sonnet. You have eight, an octave and a sestet. The Shakespearean or Elizabethan or English sonnet is divided into three quatrains and a rhyming couplet. So in other words, Jan may ask you, what makes up the Shakespearean, Elizabethan, or English sonnet? So you might be asked one or two questions like that. So it's divided into three quatrains. A quatrain is a poem of four lines and then a rhyming couplet. That's a poem of two lines. Epic. This is a long narrative poem centered around a hero with great achievements. The two types are the primary epic, which is usually oral, with an unknown poet. You never know the poet. And the secondary epic, which is usually written and has a named poet. Now, an example of the secondary um, epic is Paradise Lost by John Milton. In that case, John Milton, in that poem, talks about the story of Adam and Eve and how they were tempted and how they were sent out of the Garden of Eden. So he talks about how God created the world and then how Adam and Eve were sent out of the Garden of Eden and how they lost paradise in that case. That's what John Milton does in that poem. Then you have a dirge. This is a melancholic poem used to express grief and extreme sadness on occasion of a person's death is usually slow solemn and mournful now look at it this way an elegy is also the same but while elegies are sung while elegies are recited a dirge is a song it's usually sung you sing a dirge then for an elegy you don't sing an elegy take note example Kofi Awona's song of sorrow We'll go on a break and then we'll continue shortly. Thank you.